like and subscribe and follow my channel. Let's talk about Bad Girls Club season six and my experience. I'm Omri Senna and let's get this shit done and fucking over with. We're here to talk about everything that happened in that house from talking like Borat to casting till the end, the reunion. All right, so let's get started. First of all, let's talk about casting. Casting is insane. My casting was different from every other girl's. My casting was three days left before they stopped searching for girls. They've been searching for girls for six months, I believe. And I got fired by my father. Thank you, father. And because of that experience of being fired by my dad, I was looking around for a new job. And I saw an ad saying, hey, want to be on a reality TV show? Send us two paragraphs about yourself. So I did. And then, remember I had like, they had like three days left. So they like, boom, they sent me the, the 68 questions and they were like, congratulations, here's the application. And that's the 68 questions that you have to fill out with like two paragraphs each. After you do that, they're like, thanks, we'll keep in touch. If we respond back to you, you're gonna get a Skype schedule <laughs> to be a casting director. So then I got a Skype schedule like really quick. It was, my casting was literally in four days. Like everything was happening. Girls had like six months to do their videos, to fly to California, to do, I did everything like in four days, in four days. So they were like, oh, this application, the 68 question one, they were like, you need to by Wednesday, four o'clock in the afternoon I was like today is Wednesday and it's 10 o'clock in the morning so yeah so after that they hit me up they they hit me up on Skype I did my Skype interview it was hilarious they loved me they were like okay we're gonna fly you out oh no they did say yeah first they flew me out or did I do my yeah they flew me out and then I was out there and I met the casting directors that was fun and the night before they tell you like when they pick you up it's an, a huge process because they pick you up and they're like don't party don't do anything because the next day is gonna be insane but what did i do i went and partied woke up like shit, looked horrible and then you know then you meet the casting directors when you meet the casting directors they ask you a bunch of questions it was hilarious i answered it then you go and you get an IQ test. The IQ test takes forever. It's like more than 300 questions. It's an IQ and personality test. So I think it's like a lot, a lot of questions being done there. But before that, I forgot to tell you, when you arrive in the airport, they give you a package. And that's the personality test is like 600 questions. And they're like, yeah, you need to get this done by to have it down tomorrow. So like down not even tomorrow they gave you until the guy drove you to the hotel so yeah that's how this shit works and then for me that's how it worked for me because they were trying to get i guess they didn't have the formula they were looking for and that's what they were doing with me and then after i took my iq test then you meet a shrink but before you meet just shrink you're like sitting there and the two executive producers they tricked me. I didn't even know who the hell they were. They came in the room and I literally thought they were like people that were going to take my luggage <laughs> and they were laughing at me and they're like, who are you? What are you here for? And they're like, yeah, we're casting over there at Real World. I'm like, oh my God, Real World. I want to be in Real World. And they're like, oh yeah, like what are you doing? Let me see your phone. And they look through my phone and like they see like all my apps and they're like, you're such a nerd. And like, you know, they asked me questions. It was hilarious. And anyways, I got to meet the executive producers, but I didn't know they were the executive producers. And, you know, they were like asking me all these questions, I guess to get to know my personality. And I guess I was answering them correctly. Anyways, then I go to the shrink. And then you see the shrink for two hours. Yes, two hours. He's like analyzing you and shit. And then the funny thing is, he like looks at your knuckles too. He wants to see like if you're a fighter and stuff. And I'm like, these motherfuckers had that chick, that fucking stab bitches. And they looking at me if I have like wounds in my hands. It was hilarious. 
that this is why you know it's like a crazy social experiment because the way they're doing all of this is to get their formula right to get the right girls in the right house to fight <laughs> and to not get along so anyways the shrink sees me he talks he calls says about my mom that my mom's naive and all this i was like what the fuck, bro and he's like talking to me anyways so then you get your results he tells you the results and he was like listen your thing came out that you're a conservative christian i was like what i'm not gonna fuck a conservative christian like it was like extreme conservative christian because i did the personality test like if it was uh like if i was doing a job application like the personality test there's questions out of the 600 questions there's 25 questions that they want you to answer a certain way. And you can't answer those questions 11 ways wrong. So I was like, I was like 15. So like, he was like, listen, you're going into the show that you gotta dumb it down. Like, dumb it down, dumb your answers down. Because the answers would be like, do your siblings bother you often not often really often all the time so i'm like not often <laughs> like because the way i analyze thing often means like all the fucking time so no they don't bug me so then anyways they circle <laughs> questions the ones that they were like okay rechange the answers to these 25 and then I'm like, what the fuck? How the hell did I answer them? I didn't even remember. So then I had to like, the doctor's like, dumb it down, dumb it down. And it's hilarious because when the two executive producers, they came into the room, they're like, oh, so what is the show you think you're coming to? And I was like, yeah, I had bad girls coming. They're like, yeah, what is this show about? I'm like, girls in a house get trying to get along they're like they laughed in my face they're like that's the show you think you're going to i'm like yeah that's the show <laughs> so anyways so then i dumped it down get sent back on the plane then they call then you, there's a waiting and then they see like oh are you gonna be like an original or a you know a replacement and the girl calls me and she's like listen you're you're gonna you're in the cut like i'm telling you like this is literally four days she's like you're in the cut i don't know if you're an original or in a replacement but you're gonna be in the show and i was like oh fucking cool and she's like you're gonna be there i was like oh this is freaking fucking cool she's like but wait for the calls and it's nerve-wracking because you wait a couple like i guess a day or two like they said oh by friday you'll know and it's like almost like four days before that friday and they're like if we don't call you by 12 o'clock that's it like you're not in it so like you're freaking just waiting for that call or maybe not anyways then they call you and they said you're a replacement or an original i ended up being a replacement she's like don't worry you're gonna be like these girls fly out like hotcakes i'm like yeah i've seen fucking bad girls club but sometimes they don't so sometimes you're like fuck i'm not gonna be on the show i might not be if these girls don't fucking fight so then you get called like they'll tell you pack pack your stuff so all my stuff was packed ready i'm ready they're like pack this shit i had like yeah <laughs> when i'm telling you when they saw all my luggage they're like bitch what do you think you going like where do you think you're going and for how many days but anyways but they're telling you pack for 10 weeks because you know you might get called right when girls are leaving which is true our season was insane our season I think Jade left the, a week, a week in there, and that's when I was supposed to go in. So this is the story of how I was supposed to be before Ashley and before Jen, because Jade got kicked out and I got called right away. And let's call him Blue Ball Dave, because that's how I call him. I call him Blue Ball Dave. Blue Ball Dave calls me, and Blue Ball Dave is like, Wilma, are you ready? I said, oh my God. I gotta finish doing laundry and oh my god i got a couple outfits i gotta get at the store and he said i'm gonna call you back i said okay so i was finishing my laundry packing on my shit like i'm leaving he's like i'll call you back with the ticket number this guy did not call me back i was so mad i was so so mad i was heated so then that's when they got ashley in there 
And then after Ashley, they got Jen. But then they called me. Like, I am so mad at him. And even the, the executive producer saw, because when I arrived, you know, you go to the hotel. So this is how then you arrive. You get to the Bad Girls Club. They take you to a hotel and you get there. And then they're like, okay, you're ready? Oh my God, you're going to get... And then the two executive producers meet you. I'm like, oh shit, you're the two guys. And they're like, yeah, we're actually the executive producers of the show. We were tricking you. And you seem fun and amazing and fucking a partier. And that's what we want you to be. And like, that's what you're here. We don't want you to be anything else. Like, you know, when, like people say... Oh, you know, you guys are always making us be something. We're not. You're here to have fun. Have fun. I'm like, yeah. And I go, and all I want to know is, because all I wanted from Bad Girls Club was kind of like the free vacation to wherever they were going. So I got my passport, and I'm like, with my passport, I'm like, did y'all go on the trip? Because, like, remember, I didn't even have a lot of weeks left. I had two and a half weeks left. So I'm like... This show's almost done. Like, my friends were like, yeah, pack that shit. Put your shit away. Like, and they're like, I'm like, blue ball day. Oh, when producers were calling me to tell me I was ready to go. I'm like, this bullshit. I'm not believing you until I see my ticket. Until I'm on the plane and I'm in California. I'm not believing you guys. And then that's when they were like, what the hell? Like, what did this guy do? I'm like, he called me up. He didn't let me go. Like, he didn't fucking call me again, like, to go. Because I told him I was doing laundry. So they were laughing about that. But anyways, they tell me, where's your passport? And I was like, oh, yeah, they haven't gone to the trip yet. To the real trip. Because, you know, Bad Girls has us two trips. That little local trip that they go to, then the real trip. And I was like, yeah, they haven't gone to the real trip. I was gassed. I was like, yep, here's my passport. I'm ready. So then they tell me, get dressed, you go into a club. I said, I bet. I'm getting all dressed up, thinking I'm gonna go to a club. So before, so this now is before you meet the girls. So before you meet the girls, it's very like nerve wracking because like, you're not even mic'd up yet. And then like, you're just with these camera people and you're like with the, actually the director of the night, the producer, the director of the night. And then, um. She was like, girl, let me tell you, these bitches is boring. I was like, what? She's like, nah, I'm just letting it tell. Like, they corny as hell, we're tired. Like, you saw everybody, they looked miserable. And then she was like, just get ready. Like, she looked miserable. She looked like she was done. Like, she didn't even want to tape anymore. And I was like, Jesus. So we had a little uh, bar before I meet the girls or whatever. And she's like, you want something? I said, can I get a shot? She's like, yeah, how many shots you want? I was like, yo, give me two tequila shots. And I was like, she's like, you want something to eat? I said, yeah, give me some. <laughs> I asked for some shrimp, some co shrimp cocktail. That was horrible. Two tequila shots and shrimp cocktail. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. So we get there and she's like, listen, don't let their energy, like, mess up your energy. Like, and I wasn't understanding. Like, they, like, she was telling me things like the girls were, like, not cooperative, like, like basically they had no film like they're like there's nothing happening like the season's like it's horrible and i was like jesus fucking christ and i was like i'm gonna be stuck with a bunch of like boring girls so then the limo comes and i was like you know they mic'd you up to get what you ready da, 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 da. you might you go action and then you're just waiting. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's happening. And that's when the limo scene, you see, pull up the limo right. scene. I don't start drama. I don't yeah. start fighting. That's me, if yeah. You do start with me, and you finish it, but that's how it is. And the funny thing is that that Rough Rider, I was beasting, beasting the executive producers to know what the fuck. Because, you know, if you watch Bad Girl Club, every girl has, like, her little nickname. And I was beasting to know what my nickname was. I was beasting, like... You don't understand. Even at the reunion, I kept asking them, like, what name did you guys put me? Because the name literally says, like, everything that they're thinking about you. So I always wanted to know, and they were thinking I was the most annoying person in the world because I kept asking them about that. But anyways, so we meet, like, limo pulls up. I get in. Nobody is dressed. I was like, these motherfuckers told me, get dressed. That I'm going to a club. I thought I was going to meet the girls at a nightclub. I was like, oh shit, I'm going to get on the limo by myself. And I'm going to ride in there like, what's up, bitches? And I get in that limo. <laughs> it was like, creak, 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 sound, please. Creak, creak. I don't even know how to do any of these effects.
effects that I'm trying to say to put cricket sound and all this shit and put video there. Like, I'm pointing, like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Let's see how the fuck this shit comes out. Anyways, I see these girls. They looking fucking crazy in the limo. Like, they just hopped out of fucking bed. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? These motherfuckers lied to me. It's like I was going to a club. I was ready to dance. You know, understand? 27. I was everywhere. I was all around the LES. My casting tape that they even told me the to film, they were like, do seven things different. My seven things was going to seven different nightclubs. Like, <laughs> that was me at the time. I was always partying. And so that's when I met the girls and we got pilled, we got drunk, and we had fun. And experience with Jen. At the house was I couldn't stand Jen because Jen from the beginning at the limo she gave me problems. Nikki and Lauren seemed cool because they weren't like they were still trying to film. Like I guess they were still trying to have fun and ex enjoy. Like Corey wasn't, Jessica wasn't, Char wasn't. They were just like just there. They were like kind of done with everything. And Char, Char was like done. Like, Char was done with the show. So, I started, like, being like, okay, what the... These people were right. Production was right. Like, everybody was right. Cameraman were right. Everybody was right. Like, because everybody was telling me, like, yo, this season sucks. Like, this season, these girls suck. But then I started realizing that it's not that they suck. It was that nobody let anybody manipulate them to do things. Like, Jessica was one person. Jessica will f argue with you and push you, but she wouldn't let production manipulate her to say anything like she would always get fine like all her money was always deducted like deduction that was our shit in the, in the house deduction we were always there deduction because like anytime you would say something like if you mentioned the reunion like it's insane you guys don't understand it's like like i said from the beginning it's a social experiment then you go to the house and the house is bright as fuck lights everywhere always on lights are always on like when you're sleeping, the lights are on. The lights only turn off when the freaking last girl goes to sleep. And that's never. Like, Nikki in our house, she would go to sleep at 5 in the morning, maybe 4.30, be up by 6.30, starting to work out again. And you're like, the lights were always on. So you barely had real sleep in that house. Then at the end, you really do because you just, your brain just get The brain is such a magnificent thing. It's insane. The brain gets used to a lot of things. Like... At first, I did not, I was like, yo, this camera shit, like, this is insane. Like, I couldn't get used to it at, like, the first two days, the, the first three days. Then it's true, your brain just, like, eliminates them. Like, you don't see the camera people anymore because people don't understand, you have 15 people following you. There's team one team, the morning team, the afternoon team, the night team, and, like, a lot of motherfuckers. And then when we go to a nightclub, the whole team's cut off. And then when, like, in the morning time, it's just the morning team, and it's, like, it's insane. People don't understand my girls' club experience is, like, in freaking, like I said, it's insane. <laughs> it's literally insane from when you get to the house, I got to the house, and then all the rules. You get all the, people don't understand all the rules. That's why all the girls are always, we're always in the house naked, and then now I understand why the girls were looking crazy when I got in the limo. There's so many rules, like, you can't go out. If they don't allow you, you have to ask permission. And one thing was we were in L.A. And because of the beginning of all the seasons of Bad Girls Club, like that's why Bad Girls Club 5 went to Miami. Because Bad Girls Club 1, 2, 3, and 4 fucked it up for season 5 because no one wanted any Bad Girls anywhere, no location anywhere. So then when we got there, season six, they decided to, okay, season five was crazy. They did so much shit in Miami and at their trip. Like, one of the things I say has to be done, Netflix or somebody, is they have to do the behind the scenes and or everything about what the fuck happened behind the scenes of Bad Girls Club because, girl, there's so much, so much, like, all the shit that you hear, you don't even know if it's true or not. Like, half the stuff that happened in season five, like, real stuff that production, like, hides, like, in every season. And our season, our season, we had the producers that they were, like, over them. They wanted to get rid of them over. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Too much of that. Too much of yay. 
<laughs> it was hilarious. They were, but they were great guys. They were funny. But I don't know about the other seasons that I've had experienced them. But after you get to the house, you see all the rules. You have to call the bat phone. The bat phone's upstairs. You call the bat phone whenever you want something. If you need to borrow the car, I fucked up one of the Jeeps already, like at the end. Like a branch literally fell and then we only had one car and everybody was mad. It was like, fuck, we only got fucking one car and they don't let you go out by yourself half the time. They only like people that they know, like nothing's going to happen, go by themselves. If they know somebody that they want, they want you to go with somebody because they want interaction. They want that footage. And I guess it is your job. It is your job to fucking give them footage. You signed a contract. And... Let's say when I got there, everybody was done. So the reason Char was done was me and Char were the only ones like 27 years old. And it was funny. Like she was the sophisticated and like the one with the get her shit together. And I was the partier. But because I was like, oh, I'm 27. I'm living my fucking life. Like, come on. And um, Char was done because Char shit came out on TMZ. And uh, when the case about... I don't know if it, I could put it, but her case with her boyfriend that they supposedly drugged the girl and the boyfriend like raped the girl and Char was like, they the only ones that fucking knew about like even da 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 and like Char was like, I'm done, I'm done and like I gave them my all and like all this stuff and I was like, okay and then like Jessica wasn't about it like every fucking day I would hear her fight with production and the, you know, everybody remember, I only had two and a half weeks there, but the two and a half weeks I was there, I actually gave them more footage than anything because the whole season they filled up with me at the end, basically. And all the shenanigans I got into because the girls barely gave them anything before I got there. They did, but it was like, I guess it wasn't enough for them. Like our season, the girls were like, that's it. We've given you enough. That's one thing everybody has. Is it real? Is it real? Like, is it real? Yeah, the fights are real. Like, what's, it depends on the season. I liked my season. Every girl like let each other handle their own business. They didn't get involved. That's one thing I loved about my season. No girl got involved with some other chick's drama. And other people would talk to each other. That's why people would get mad at Nikki. Because Nikki wanted to like, you know, make a like, oh, you can't talk to people. And we're like, no, nah, not really. I want to do whatever the fuck I want to do. And that was the problem with a lot of girls and Nikki. She wanted to make things like a, like a, like a click thing. And it wasn't working. Well, it kind of was, I guess, at the beginning. But then when I got there, it was just like, it was all over the place. Behind the scenes, every girl really was fine with each other even nikki half the time when the cameras weren't even around she would be fine but then when the guys would be around then she fucking act crazy but i give it to her she played her role like amazing like she was annoying 24 7 from the beginning to the end and if she wasn't that way that season would have been been amazing and hilarious and she was hilarious and Kentucky was hilarious and Jessica was hilarious Corey was hilarious I think we were all hilarious we we're literally hilarious and then the production was so mad at us because we kept talking like Borat like and I came I came back home talking about with that for, I can't even remember anymore because I feel like my brain was like no mas of that shit like my best friend was like bitch stop it I think they're like is it all right <laughs> I mean, I thought they were talking, and the producer was like, stop, stop it right now. Stop right now. We do not want that. And yeah, so the fights with uh, Jennifer were quick. It was something like, you know, per, I guess production wanted her out. They were kind of, kind of telling Nikki, like, we gotta get this, you gotta get this girl out. I, Nikki was the girl that production would go to. That was the thing. Production always goes to a girl. And for me, Nikki was the girl, basically, that production would always be like, it's time for, it's time for some fresh meat. And then they'll make Nikki do shit. And that's why I started to really see it. And I was getting mad at them because when they finally saw that there was a way to push my button, they kept telling like, oh, yeah. 
keep fucking with my memory like that, keep fucking with my memory like that. And I was like, okay, this is gonna end bad because I'm gonna fucking beat the shit out of her. And I'm gonna put, that's why I was like, I'm gonna put blood. I was even talking to Nikki. I was literally talking to production because production's insane. Like the shit that they would like, you know, keep telling this girl, like she was crying one time in the bathroom. She was like done. Like she was done. She was done with the, like, it's like, it's annoying. And, but whatever, it was great TV, I guess. <laughs> about the fight the things that they change and they make they make things like uh they edit things in a way like the when i cried the reason i cried wasn't because the girls didn't want to dance that's so stupid i feel like if they would have put the reason why or i feel like the guy might have not signed the contract of the thing that's another thing there were cock blockers Ugh, it was like so insane i wanted to go out there and party and <laughs> everybody was done as, and the production, I, I don't know, I was into minors, I guess, because they didn't even let guys that I wanted to back to the house. Or like this one kid who was like, she's not even 21, Wilma. She's not fucking even 21. And then I was like, this, she said to be 21 again. And I was like, yeah, he has to be 21. But the production was cool with me because like, I was getting tired and they were like, oh my God, Wilma, don't, you know, be happy. I was like, this is miserable all these people are miserable in this house they're like be happy look we're gonna take you to clubs that you like you want to hear dubstep nobody even knew what dubstep was like nobody even had twitter i went instagram i had all this and all these girls like lauren even know about fucking um uh what is, what is this show I gave, the Vampire's Diary. I told Lauren about the Vampire. No, I told Lauren about Gossip Girl. Lauren didn't even know about Gossip Girl. And then Lauren now to watch Gossip Girl. It was hilarious. But anyways, we were there and <clears throat> production tried to do everything just to like keep me happy. And then that night, they should have really put the real issue. Oh, I want to say like the cameramen, the crew, there was these two ones that were so adorable. I wish I knew their names. I, I, they were awesome one had glasses one was like short and bald and it was like they were such a great pair he the other one was super long like he was so long i don't even know how the hell he fit half the time because remember these camera guys had to be like with us in these little tiny limos and this guy was like almost seven feet and then the other one's like short or whatever and they ended up being like like kind of the reason like i didn't leave that night with the fight because the reason why me and uh Nikki and Lauren fought that night was because not because they didn't want to dance it was because there's this group of guys from the you know club scene people and they wanted to drink our bottle and I was like well we got a bottle we're three we could drink this by ourselves we don't need him and his 20 posses you know because we're gonna go to another club and we're gonna be we're gonna leaving anyway soon so they were like oh no just like like you know let him so it's the first him and two people and then 20 people came and then I was like, okay, you're not saying anything, but you tell everything, you know, you fight with the girls in the house and you're not even defending yourself out here. You're just like letting him push you around. And then that's when like, you know, Nikki would start saying, started saying shit and I got so mad because I wanted to punch her and I couldn't punch her and I was really, 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 really mad. And then I got so furious because I was like, I don't even know where we live. I don't even know the address. I don't know shit. I don't even know California. <laughs> so I was just like so furious. And then I got in the limo. And then like the two cameramen were there. And they were like, just like, calm down, calm down. Like telling me. And like I would see them. I was like, Whoa. and I got so mad because I knew I was like, I want to stay longer. It's not even that many days left. And but who knew? Because they were telling us production kept telling the girls like, always threatening them that they were going to literally film for more because if they don't have footage we were going to be stuck there for four more weeks and the girls were like losing their fucking minds and i was like yeah let's do it and they've been there like since the beginning they're like fuck this shit i want to get the fuck out of here fuck this place it was hilarious so yeah so then you know me and nikki's fights were just mostly like bro leave me the fuck alone and production kind of like telling her like eh, push a little buttons a little bit more push a button a little bit more and i was just tired of it and half the time you're drunk people don't understand our house was hot as hell all the time sleep deprived like drunk all the time 
no pool, hot is hot, hot. There's no air conditioner in the house. That's why most of the girls are always naked in my girls club. There's no AC, the AC was broken. The house was 120 and I was like, yo, this house is 120. And they were like, you know what they did? They went to the thermometer and they put a freaking tape inside a, a cardboard and then you couldn't see the temperature in the house anymore and you're like what the fuck bro and like that's the that's how they would resolve shit that's the things they would do and like oh a chick's acting crazy you think she might have an alcohol problem hey here's a patron for you missy like they don't give you food they'll give you like some pasta and shit and that's it that's why they give you money every week you know, that's what bad girls get paid, like, for them to eat. And that's why some girls, you see them fight over money because it's like, yo, you only get one free bottle at the club. Them bitches is thirsty. They want to keep drinking. They'll tell you they'll split a bill on the bottle. They don't, like, that never happened to me because I didn't care. I just bought bottles on my own. I didn't really care. I would do it. And, <clears throat> and we would, like, club hop. We were smart. We're like, okay, this one's over. Let's go to another one. But my season, they were done. By the time I was there, I'm telling you, the girls didn't even want to fucking go out. And production wouldn't even let you out. And you would just stay home. And you're fighting all the time. And that's why bad girls always fight. Sleep deprived. No fucking food, really. Alcohol, alcohol, alcohol. Periods. Because all our fucking menstruations link up. And we're all bleeding. They were all so happy that their shit got linked. And I arrived to the house and everybody started bleeding. I was happy because I was like, oh shit, I'm gonna go. I'm not gonna have my period. I had my period. It was awful. And that's when you deal in a house with seven girls menstruating at the same time on alcohol, sleep deprived and hungry in a disgusting house with no pool, dirty pool, dirty jacuzzi and dirty house. Production would yell at me because I would be cleaning the house every fucking day. They'd be like, well, Marie, They'll call me in the back. Stop cleaning the house. They'll tell the girls, tell Wilmer to stop cleaning the house. Stop cleaning the house. Stop cleaning the house, Wilmer. Because there was nothing else to do. You couldn't read. You couldn't go on the internet. You couldn't hum a song. <laughs> humming songs. They'll get so mad. They'll call the back phone. Stop humming that song. And like, you couldn't hum a song. You couldn't do nothing. You couldn't even read a book. It was insane. You're not a magazine. So that's why Bad Girls Club would always fight because you can't do anything. You got to look at each other's faces not leave out of the house and drink and just argue with each other 24 fucking seven. And let's now talk about the reunion. <clears throat> when you go to the reunion, I feel like that's another thing that mess up. They put, well, our season, they put everybody in separate. That's how I met Sydney. Like they put everybody in separate hotels, like chicks that they don't want to meet, like for them to like, I guess, squash it or like fight off camera. That's what me and Jen, me and Jen actually squashed it at the club the night before. If me and her would have met each other at the club the night before with Jessica telling us like to like, cause Jessica loved Jen, Jessica loved me. So she was like, yo, come on, you don't even fucking know. Like she's a, such a, she's a dope girl, man. She's a dope girl. And then I fucking got to know Jennifer and Jennifer is a fucking amazing girl. She's fucking awesome. We're still friends. That's one of the people I still keep in contact with. I love Jen. Besos. And I love Nikki. I still keep in contact with Nikki and Lauren. I still laugh. Like, you know, we hit each other here and there. And but I don't talk, I barely see Jessica or talk to Jessica. I talk to her brother. And Corey now. Char. At the reunion, I'm so mad because production could have told me what Char said about me. Like when I left, Char said I was dirty. I was like, okay, you should have put that clip. Instead, because I would have beat the shit out of Shar when they asked me to do that. Like, they asked me, oh, what you going to do? I was going to do shit. I was like, high as hell. And I was like, drunk as hell. That production was so, that's another story. Production was so mad at me that I got liquor upstairs in my thing. And they're like, how the fuck did Wilma get liquor? How did, they wanted other girls drunk, but they didn't want me drunk. So I got liquor and I was smoked up because I was with Sydney the whole time. And like me and Sydney were smokers. So we were just smoking the whole fucking time. Like that's why you guys see me in my fucking, in the thing with my ponytails that you guys mess up. Show them the ponytail. My little Betty growing out ponytail. I was stoned as hell. Sydney was supposed to have her interview. My interview was supposed to be like a day after. The day, almost the next day. And they called me and I was like stoned and I went. And I was super so that's why most of the clip in the reunion I'm just like chilling and shit because I'm like yo I'm feeling nice I'm looking pretty I paid money for this fucking hair like I got a girl I paid her hella money to do that hair I paid for makeup I was like I am not I am not 
gonna look crazy for you people. And then there was like, I was done. I was done. Like, there was no reason for me to argue with Nikki. When she was talking to me, she wasn't even saying nothing. They should have put the clip of Shara's calling me dirty and I would have smacked Shar. I would have smacked Shar. The way, the reason why Sydney went and tried to smack Shar was because like production like whispered and was like, are you guys not going to do anything? And then like, they were like, well, Marie Perez loves you. You're like the Latina version. Like, I forgot who the fuck they said I was the Latina version of something. And I was like, that's not gonna fucking motivate me to fucking go smack somebody. Like, just because you're telling me that is not. So that's what kind of got, how I got blacklisted from them because it fe they felt like I wasn't like cooperating, I didn't cooperate with them during that. Let's talk about after getting kicked out. When you get kicked out, it's so, I'm so mad at what they did to me. So this is one of the things I have to say. These motherfuckers made me, you know, you get out of the house and get that white beater I had. And I was looking crazy at the end. Like, uh, finish the bitch up. Show that clip right there. I was looking crazy. Well, they had me walk in the mall with no fucking shoes, my little fucking booty shorts, the white beater. And like, walk in the whole mall. The whole mall made me walk barefooted for them, the executive producers, to fucking sit me down and tell me... Okay, well, Marie, we saw the footage. She hit you with a soft pillow. <laughs> and, like, you choked her. Like, a lot of stuff of me and my fights with Nikki, they, like, toned it down. Like, the limo ride, that fight, that fight with the limo ride, that was a long fucking time. Like, I was really hitting Nikki. Like, they don't even show you in the Mexico trip. Nikki's rib cage was fucked up. Like, it was all black and blue. Her whole side was all fucked up. Because... We were in the highway when we started fighting. And you heard the guys like, what are we going to do? They're like, don't stop. Keep going. I kept beating the shit out of me in that limo. They couldn't show me and Nikki like fighting for literally. They sped it up. They sped it up when I finally, she, they pulled her off and were like right by the house. That's how they sped it up. And I felt so bad. Like I was like, Jesus Christ. I was like laughing. I was like, yo, what the fuck? In my head, like now after, like I was like, Jesus Christ, they let that shit happen. At the time, I was just beating her up. And then the fight with each other upstairs, that was hilarious. People don't understand my strategy as well. People are always talking about my things. Like there's so many fights, like this strategy. Our, our guards, I don't know about other uh, bad girls security, but our guards were chubby guys like big boys i'm talking about they were big like they were like 300 pounds so one of the guys he always sit downstairs so i was like whenever there's a fight i'm just going up i'm doing it all the way upstairs going up the stairs doing it all the way by the makeup room because it's such a long walk and i knew he always just chilled right there in the corner so that's my strategic move and why we oh i that's why i would always throw her to the floor was because I knew by the time security will pull us away, he will be so fucking tired. He wouldn't like get up the steps enough, like get to me, then go under and like pick up. It's, it's going to be a process. So that's why you always see somebody else like run it because he took forever. And it was pretty, that was my strategic shit in the house. And then with the lamp shit, people are like, why I hit her with a lamp? And then I don't understand why some people want me to be super violent because there's people who are like, oh, those punches were weak. They were weak. It's like, why do I want to kill her? Like, this is not gladiators, son. This is not revenge, kill until, like, be killed. No, it's a fucking TV reality TV show. I'm not fucking going to jail for nobody. I followed, I knew, that's why I kept telling her to smack me. Like, I'm a rule person. Like, I'm a strategic person. So I learned the rules. I was like, what's the rules? What? Oh, open slap. Oh, what else? What else is the other rule? Oh, like, you can't, you could do like this, but you can't do like this. I bet. Then what else? Oh, if she hits you first, you could like hit her repeatedly. Okay, got it. So like, <laughs> so I was learning all the rules and just like doing strategies all around because I was like, and then one of the things I said, don't touch my shit. Nobody didn't touch my stuff because by the time I got there, Mad things happen in my seat. Like, Nikki called the police on all the other girls. So she even told me from the dick. She's like, nobody's touching nobody's stuff because I already called the police on all these girls and they all owe me like $1,000 each because Nikki's camera got messed up. All her protein shit that cost her mad money got messed up. So, like, nobody was beat for that life right there. And I feel like 
all those things end up other girls being punished for you know less things bad girls could do so like i think that's why the franchise just got ended at the end because like our season was in california california didn't want anything with us that's why we couldn't even go to places then they kept hopping up to different places with other girls i really don't even know much about that after that but yeah and then after bad girls club the experience was great after bad girls club you get to travel and you make money going to different places and meeting people shout out to all the promoters that fucking paid for me to go out there and party with people and meet people and just show them who i was <laughs> Those times are best. They those are the best times to be out and like that's when like Jersey Shore came out and like reality TV was at its peak and all the clubs were like booking reality stars. So it was pretty like a fun time. It was like people were still going to clubs and enjoying life and not quarantine and shit. But yeah, that was my Bad Girls Club experience.